your thoughts on Cincinnati entering the Big 12, and are you looking forward to making a visit to Nipper Stadium? Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to any of those road games, to be honest. But, uh, you know, uh, obviously Coach Satterton is just taking over the program. The job Coach Pickle did is outstanding. Um, being in the MAC, you have a chance to be, a, you know, a little bit more around um, the state of Ohio and have an understanding of what they've done there and things like that. I have great respect for what they've done holistically, athletically there over the short term. And, um, again, it's a, it's a different recruiting area, I think, that will open up. But again, they, they may have some niche there as well. Now moving to the Power Five. So it, it's going to be an exciting, challenging time. Honestly, that's the last one on the schedule So for this season. So I'll probably wait to eat to, to before we really, really dive into it. But uh, again, a, a, a fine addition to this conference. It's something we've heard over and over again is about the depth of this conference. What's your opinion on, on kind of the parity in the Big 12 and how it's up for grabs? Well, I think one part of it is that our, our program's starting to play at a level that, that, that it needs to and should be at and, and those things. and. and uh, that has helped probably that that second half of the league, and I I, I think that was kind of a, a slow, kind of a slight compliment to us in a way that we're we're, we're kind of doing our thing now. So, but it, it makes it an exciting thing. It, it's going to be maybe if you're playing somebody at home, if you're playing them later in the year, if you're how you match up, and maybe not just record wise, but maybe just you know personnel wise on a certain given week against someone, and that's going to make this an exciting conference that I think. You know, fans are going to enjoy, and I think the people around the country that love college football will embrace. Lance, what's it say about your program before you came here, the struggles, you come in, and then you've gotten to the point now, you've got the preseason offensive player here. Yeah, yeah that, things have changed. <laughs> yeah, from not even making it to, the, to here the first year, to, to things like that, we've, we've, we've made some progress. But it says a lot about Jalen. Um, it says a lot about our, you know, what our coaching staff has done in development holistically I think it kind of goes back to the question of this conference as a whole and, and the, I think hopefully the, the respect that, that our program starting to get and, and our players are. Now we have to take that opportunity from being around a 500 football team and, and, and taking that next step. You know this I don't know which one's going to be harder, but uh, you know that next one's going to be a huge step for us to try to get ourselves um, to be that consistent bowl team that we want to be. Three of those guys were with you here last year. They said it feels different this year than, than it did last year. Are you feeling that and feeling that yeah. for them? Um, I, I think more for them. You know, you know. I'm sorry, we, we've got that usual way of kind of going through it. But I, I kind of go back to when our players said after, I, I think it was after our, our third win on uh, the season and it was on the road. and. You know, the kids were going to be proud about wearing a Kansas football shirt around campus where I don't know if they could always walk around with that, with their chest out a little bit. And I, I think our guys are getting some of that confidence. And, and honestly, as we know, that, that, that helps you approach each day. It helps you go about it. Self-confidence and a lot of things and confidence in what you're doing as a program is huge. Lance, of the four new schools, is there one that Kansas fans maybe can relate to or have a history with the most? Oh, boy, I'd, uh, boy, I'd have to ask one of my other people. Um, I don't know. You know, we played Houston last year, so I go that direction. I'm not really sure if what the pass would have been with BYU. And she said, um, I don't know, we all been to Disney, I think, maybe, maybe. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I just think all those have their, uh, you know, Terry Mahajer from UCF, though, is a Kansas grad, and, and there's some connections there. But... Uh, you know, there, I just know that each one of those in, in throughout the history of college football, some more recent than others, have made uh, pretty impactful statements uh, across the way, and they're, and they're going to be uh, quality opponents. We're from Orlando. Can you, give us an <laughs> yeah, well, well, can you give us an idea of what a team like UCF is walking into when it takes on that nine-game grind of a, of a Big 12 schedule? Well, I, I, I think, you know, they've been through some of that through the years. I they. You know, Coach Melzahn's been through it in, in his previous job of what it takes to be ready. And, and that's where you're going to see, like, I think for all of us, it, it goes to what your depth is and, and other things like that and the physicality. And, and, and for a school like UCF, and some of the travel, and there's a lot of, a lot of components to that. But uh, I know uh, I worked for Danny White at Buffalo, and I know what Danny did there to get that thing. And Terry's taking that over, and, and I know they're going to be able to do uh, a lot of great things there. Jalen Daniels becoming the first Jayhawk quarterback to be named the Big 12 preseason offensive player of the year. Do you think that puts a bullseye on his back? 
Well, I think, you know, I, I think he started to make a statement last year. I, but again, yeah, I think, it, but again, I think holistically as what our offense has done, it's going to make it something that people want to try to slow him down. Um, I think Jalen also knows that he has to go out and play each and every week and, and prove himself. And I think he embraces that. And But we have to make sure that uh, we, we take care of him and keep him healthy. Yes, could you speak to the idea of having every opponent's full attention this year? Well, you know, I don't know. I can't speak for other programs, but you know, I don't know if you know there were there were days where you'd hear in the old in the old Big Eight where Nebraska would be working on Oklahoma against you know some schools. I wouldn't, I'm not saying if Kansas was one of those, but it, it might have been. So it, it was just a matter of having some base things ready to go and then go play the game. I, I would like to think that we're we're not at that point. Lance, kind of piggybacking off of Brett's question earlier, you know, you now have instead of just not in the business of expectation get the office Big 12 player of the year, but also you're no longer in the bottom selling part of the Big Ten as this is the standings. What does that say for the persona of the program and also the expectation of the program moving forward when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to the transfer yeah. portal and all those other things? Well, um, that, that, we're, that we're making progress in this in this program. I, I think when they look at maybe you know our staff continuity, what our, what our players are doing now, what we're doing offensively, what we're making a commitment. So it's, it's not one thing, it's going to be all holistic, but now we have to stay the course. But all those things are very positive, and this may be the most positive time of energy that, that Kansas football has had in a very long time, even though we didn't play as well as we needed to late the last half of the season. So we've got to find a way to keep building those momentum, keep finding those ways it's paying off in recruiting. I think, and, and when we start getting the facilities done and everything that's on the docket, um, I, I think we'll continue to make those those climbs we need to. Quarterback succeeding in any league has to do with front five. Yeah. How much has that been more of a, 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 a I guess, landscape toward you all succeeding with your quarterback stand up right and this yeah. year being 90? I, I think with four of the five starters coming back, we said we've added a couple guys through the portal. The depth, as I said, I, I think our top nine, ten offensive linemen are going to be in a position if they've got to play a lot of snaps in the game, it's going to be it's, we're, we're going to be in, in a solid position. Okay, but we want to keep everybody up. Hopefully with that, we can rotate more guys, just like we maybe do at other positions. Then we're healthier down the stretch. Okay, when we have some matchups, we can get, and that can keep our keep our people healthy. Also, uh, you know, not just the quarterback, but keep our our, our depth of, across the board healthy and make us better team. Then what does this that also help uh, on the defensive side? Being able to stop teams and yep. all when they, when they yeah, yeah, and as we know, we we've got to be better defensively, especially on third downs. We got to get those things, and I think our again, we may rotate more in three or two two deep right, up front and in situational things. So we'll we'll keep doing that, and we, we need that. But I know we have enough of experience now, especially on the back half, to get us there. What does the success of Kansas and K State say for coaches who have paid their dues and come up through various levels of the sport? That's a great question. I appreciate you saying that. There's a lot of ways to, 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 to win football games, and a lot of us that have had to take different paths to get it. I, you know, I have nothing but respect for, for Chris Kleiman and what he's done there. And, uh, you know, we, we've probably done it the unconventional way, so to speak. But I um, appreciate that there's a lot of directors that give us the opportunity. And, and But uh, you, if you got a, if you got a system and if you, if you hold your kids accountable and have, have some structure in what you're doing and a philosophy, you have a chance to go out and win football games. Lance, the last two years, there's been the two guys, the two teams that have won the Big 12 title came as the sixth and seventh best odds to win it. There's kind of an openness right now when it comes to the future of this conference. Do you feel like that with the success of programs like Kansas, Kansas State, or Penn State, not the major institutions, that does do wonders for also when it comes to continuity and also potential expansion? Uh, absolutely. That's the balance of the league that's made it so exciting is that you're watching teams that maybe somebody didn't expect right away that really just kind of behind the scenes kept grinding away and getting better and doing it. Baylor did that. Coach Aranda, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, what, what, what he has done, you know, you saw Sonny do it last year. You, you can look at, you know, obviously Chris has done it. Matt Campbell at Iowa State. That's that. That's really special. And, and I think what you're saying, is, you're kind of back to your question on, on, on where people's paths are. Matt Campbell is another great example. So when you look at it, you can be anywhere, and, and that's why when you when you still look at breaking down football games, there's three or five plays that are usually going to be the one that is going to flip it. And whoever can can take advantage of those or minimize those are going to have a chance to win that Saturday. 
altijd af en toe. En omdat 